Uh, Merry Christmas from David Savory, Cognificent Services Limited, and uh, don't worry, I'm not trying to top myself here. For a start, this is an electric oven, and death by such would be a wholly impractical and painful way for one to hang up one's hat and clock off for good. Now it's the uh, it's the alcohol that's going to put pay to my shenanigans. That's a massive explosion. Maybe both if I can work it right, but uh, I've said too much and Operation Jagerbomb still has some logistical niggles that need ironing out. But in the meantime, it is Christmas and the friggin' oven isn't working, but that's okay because, like Bob the Builder, can I fix it? Yes, I can. And unlike Bob the Builder, who shouldn't be fucking around with the electrics, I kind of know what I'm doing with this thing. First up, let me preface this by describing the fault and the events up to this point. The bloody wife has been complaining for weeks that the oven is taking ages to get up to temperature. So what's going on? Well, like many other models, there are multiple elements in this oven. The fan element, the grill element, and the bottom element. And each of those is itself two elements, giving us six physical elements in total. Keeping up so far? Good. When the oven is switched on, and we normally use the fan option between 180 and 220 degrees Celsius for our fish, chips, faggots and turkey twizzlers. Yeah, you heard me right. Turkey twizzlers. Fuck you, Jamie Oliver, you fat-mouthed wanker. So it takes a few minutes, of course, for the oven to get up to speed, and it does this by activating some, but not all, of those elements. On this Siemens oven, one may accelerate the heating by use of the boost function, which bobs on additional elements not normally used in the standard heating cycle. It burns more power, of course, but it gets the son of a bitch ready to rumble sooner rather than later, which is what you want when your stomach is rumbling and your fish fingers are frosted up harder than a snowman's icicle. But why has this oven started taking so long to get jiggy with it? Well, I haven't examined the fan or bottom elements yet, but if we look at the grill elements located at the top, it's clear to see that the damn thing is split in multiple places. You see all that white shit? Well, you shouldn't be able to. If you're looking at an element, then visible splits or bulges are a sure sign that its goose is cooked, unlike your Christmas goose, or turkey, or one of those frankly bizarre arrangements where smaller birds are shoved up the arses of progressively bigger birds. Like that should even be a thing. So, I don't know, I'm guessing here that perhaps the fan element is normally used to heat the oven in conjunction with the outer grill element, and because that's busted, then that's why it's taken ages to heat up. I, I don't know for sure, I'm going to have to open it up to find out, but uh, certainly that grill's not going to work at present as it's split wider than the camel toe on a Russian shot putter. Which reminds me, I really must clear my browser history before the wife uses the computer again, but uh, I'm straying off topic here. I need to talk about electrical oven heating elements. But if I'm right and it's just this top element that needs changing, then Christmas dinner is back on the menu and we don't all have to pile down to Weatherspoons this Christmas day to get festive with a bunch of angry single men and inappropriately dressed divorcee women. Well, joy to the fucking world because look what I got the wife for Christmas. Oh yes, that's a genuine semen spare part there, folks. Not uh, one of your half-price rip-off elements. Oh no, this one to get the little lady browning my sprouts, basting my bird, and burning the fucking parsnips again. But uh, I don't know why her reaction was the way it was when she opened it this morning. It seems a bit strange to me. It's, it's like last year's Christmas present, which I got for her, which were these, uh, these HEPA flow filters for her vacuum cleaner. You can see she's been using them, so I don't understand that uh, how someone can complain about receiving a gift and then you know, go on to use it. Anyway, let's change this top element out. To do so, I shall have to extract the oven from its housing. This is usually fairly easy, but first it's best to isolate the bastard. In my kitchen, because I wired it all in, I have a double pole isolator I can use, but BS7671 doesn't mandate such, at least not that I've ever found, and isolation may be required from the consumer unit itself. If neither is obvious, then it may be that the oven is plugged into the socket circuit, probably with no means to disconnect it prior to removal because, well, your kitchen fitter was a bit of a prick. If rated over two kilowatts, then appendix 15 of the regs advises it to be on its own radial circuit, and that should definitely be the case, of course, if rated above three kilowatts. But there are all sorts of iffy fuckers working on electrics these days, so who knows? You have to take each installation on its merits. Okay, so power is now off to this thing, but I should also state that it isn't necessarily a DIY job. Never undertake any electrical work unless you're comfortable with your own competency. If you're worried that you'll kill yourself or burn your family to death, then 
Fuck it, yeah? Personally, I don't normally undertake appliance repairs, but I'm doing this one because it's my own oven and I'm confident I have the skills, the tools and the test equipment to make a plumb job of it. But don't blindly assume that what I show here is right. I mean, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm already pissed for fuck's sake, so mine is most certainly not the voice of reason here. With the power off, I can remove these front screws. There may be two or four of them, and they're often a Torx presentation, which, if you don't know, is a sort of star-shaped thing to prevent Joe Homebase from twiddling them out with his Christmas cracker screwdriver set. These puny screws are really only to prevent the thing from falling forward when you pull the door open, so there's not an awful lot to them. It's handy to have a step or platform available to place the thing onto once you extract it, because even if not heavy, it is unwieldy, especially when still tethered to the cable, and often handholds are absent, so the vicious bastard cuts into your fingers, almost like Siemens Whirlpool or Neff employed Wilkinson's sword to design the rear casing. But so long as it looks pretty from the front, who gives a shit about the installer's blood streak down the rear and sides, right? To gain access to the electrical connection serving the element I want to change, I'm going to have to take this back plate off with its numerous screws. So the best thing for this game is something like my Bosch PSR Select electric screwdriver with its bit carousel. Uh, that ought to save on uh, some of the old wrist twiddling that would ordinarily come with a manual screwdriver. And let me assure you I have enough repetitive strain injury in my wrists already without domestic cooking appliances adding to my woes. Uh, at least uh, outside of misuse of the wife's neutral bullet to that is, but we've all done that, eh chaps? Chaps? Here are the connections made with spade crimp connectors. I'm going to label these so I know where they go before I remove them. Normally I'd have the intellectual capacity to recall a colour combination, but it's Christmas and I've been mixing the grape and the grain a bit here. With the wiring disconnected I can verify my element is shagged using my MFT or even a basic ohm meter. As I slurred earlier, this is actually two elements, an outer and an inner, and I can visually see that the outer has cooked its last chips and fish and breadcrumbs combo. If I connect my meter to the terminals of the outer element, then we can see its open circuit, and off scale at over 1999 ohms. The inner element shows a reading of 34.4 ohm, however, so at least that's still cooking on gas so to speak. As both elements form a single unit, the whole shebang needs to be changed. Incidentally, ignore the cross and the red light on the tester, that's just because the upper limit on that thing is set to fail anything above 20 ohm, but that doesn't apply here. Any electrical heating element may fail open or short circuit, the former leaving it useless, while the latter will pop whatever fuse or breaker is protecting the appliance. Often you know your cooker or oven is knackered by the fact it either doesn't heat up at all or the fuse in your fuse box heats up instead of your sad Aldi ready meal for one. Comparing old with new, we know there's no continuity on the outer element of the old one and we can visually ascertain its shaggedness, but let's test what numbers we get out of the new element before it gets bolted into place. The outer element reads as 41.7 ohm, and assuming 230 volts as the supply, if we apply a little ohm's law, where power is voltage squared or divided by resistance, then the outer element must be about 1300 watts. The shorter inner element measures as 35 ohm, roughly the same as the old one, so that would be about 1500 watts. Makes sense, shorter element means less resistance to current flow, so the higher current makes for more power. That ohm fellow sure had his shit down cold. Let's get this damn thing out. We have two screws to withdraw from the rear adjacent to the electrical connections and another two from the upper surface of the inside of the oven. Twiddle these out and the element can be removed. Retrofitting the replacement consists of just popping it into place, putting the screws back in and reconnecting the wires. Oh, we've got this thing up on the ramps. Let's uh, pop open that rear panel and have a look at the fan element. Again, it's just the four screws, so piece of piss to get into. A 
apart from the fact it looks like a 14 year old oven which is what this is there are no uh, visual alarm bells ringing here uh, like the uh, the top elements we can uh, see that it's actually two separate elements uh, in one unit but there's no splits or breaks or bulges or anything there that we need to worry about so I'm pretty confident that's okay but we can do a resistance test on the fan element like we did with the upper element just to make sure that the numbers coming out of it are somewhere where they ought to be. A quick disconnect of the fan element and by placing my MFT onto it I can see the outer is at 52.2 ohm which would be about a kilowatt. Jolly good. The inner element reads as Ah shit, it's open circuit. So despite it physically looking healthy, the fan element also needs replacing. I guess that's why it's taking too long to heat up then. It's nothing to do with that grill element, although that did need replacing to get my cheese on toast back in action. But I don't have a replacement fan element here today, so uh, that's Christmas dinner scuppered. I guess I'd better check that bottom element too. It looks like it should slide out on this tray, but I'm not going to get it all the way out. Let's get the tester onto it to see what it's doing. The outer is at 87.7 ohm, which would be about 600 watts. The inner is at 106.5 ohm, which is 500 watts. I assume that's what it's supposed to measure at, so at least that's okay. I mean, to know for sure what this oven is actually doing when you switch it on, and which elements are actually being employed to heat the bugger up, I'm gonna have to uh, power it up and get a voltmeter on here. I've done something rather naughty here because I've opened this up and I've put the power back on so we have exposed live parts here. The reason for that uh, is because obviously we've got these six elements. I know that the fan element has a fault. I know I've replaced the top element but what I want to know is when I turn the fan function on which of these elements is actually in use because I'm not completely clear in my head which elements are actually um, being employed to heat this up. Obviously, yeah, I know there's a fault with the fan in there, so I'm gonna switch it on. So the fan function is now on and the fan is turning. And if I put my voltmeter across the fan element, I can see we've got power going in to the outer element and power going to the inner element. But the inner element, of course, is open circuit, so isn't doing anything but what about these other elements? Are they doing anything? Nothing on the top. Nothing on the bottom. Let's use that boost function and see what elements are employed there. The boost is on. Still nothing on the top. And we now have power on the bottom. So my efforts today to change the top element are not going to get this thing back up to speed. It seems I have a second failure here, which needs to be addressed before this thing be working properly. Bugger. Instantly, uh, best use a flex uh, on these appliances. I've got a twin and earth here, but uh, that's just because it was my kitchen and I'm cheap. With the rear casing back on and everything else back together, uncomfortable finger slicing is once again in order to stuff the fat bastard back into its hole and to screw it back into place. And there it can sit until I get the chance to order a new friggin' fan element after Christmas. Oh well, you know what they say about overcoming adversity? Anyway, I've yet to find a culinary crisis that my old mate Georgie Foreman can't rescue me from, and a couple of hours in the hot grip of this thing ought to see Christmas dinner salvaged. A few more cans of these and I won't care anyway. Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night.